Now that we've got our ukulele in tune, we're ready to learn some chords and put our fingers in places that they need to be to make the chords. In this lesson, we're going to learn the C chord, the G chord, and the F chord. And also, we'll show you how to read chord diagrams. That way, uh, if you see some unusual chords that you need to play, you can learn them by easily reading the chord diagram. But let's do it real quick, just you and me, one-on-one, -on -one, and then we'll show you how to read the chord diagrams. Okay, the first chord that we're going to do is C chord. And what I want you to do, in your left hand, you have your first finger, second finger, third finger, and fourth finger, okay? And what we'll do is we'll actually use our ring finger for this one, okay? We're going to find the third fret of the first string. The first string is your A string that we tuned, and the first string is always the one closest to the ground. Might seem a little odd, but that is it. And you're going to bring your third finger to the third fret, and you want to use the very tip of your finger, and you'll notice that my thumb is on the back of the neck as well, like this. Some people will cusp the neck as well, like this, which is totally fine. I have big hands, so I typically have a C-shape curve going around the neck of the ukulele. So use your, make sure you use the fingertip, and you're going to put your finger in between the two metal frets there. And it, it'll actually be on the third fret. And if you're close to the fret, that's a good placement. If you're a little to the left, sometimes you get a buzzy sounding note. Here's what it might sound like if you get, okay? So I'm going to move that finger a little to the right, close to the fret, and I get a better sounding note. Now, when you have your finger pressed firmly, you'll notice that it'll leave a little dent on your finger as well. Uh, but that's, that's good. That means you're pressing firmly, okay? Once you get it, you take your thumb, and you're going to strum all four strings down like this, okay? And that ends up being your C chord. And a good rhythm that you can do to practice with C is just this. It's simple. Just one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And of course, if as you practice, you want to get faster with that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that sounds really nice. Okay, moving on to the G chord. The G chord is going to require us to use three fingers. The first finger is going to be the middle finger on the second fret of the first string. So it'll be right there. And then you're going to arch your third finger around. You've got to use the very tip of your finger, put it on the third fret of string two, and then your first finger curls around onto the second fret of string three. Okay. Now once you put your fingers on there, they're going to be kind of leaning down. So what, what you want to do is kind of push your fingers and then roll them forward what that's going to do is allow your finger to come off the string underneath it. So sometimes if your fingers are laying down, this note might sound like this. It might sound like not a note at all. So just push your finger forward and you'll start to get that note. This is the G chord. And that's what that sounds like. And you can change your uh, strum placement. If you want to play here, you get a real bright sound. If you strum in the middle of the neck, you get a a really warm sound if you're right over the sound hole is a good place as well. And some people will strum with their thumb or the back of their finger like this. And I could even show you shortly how to use a pick if you would prefer to use a pick, but a pick is not traditionally used on the ukulele. Okay, third chord. This is the G chord. So what you want to do is try and memorize where you got to put your fingers on those, okay? Third fret of the C chord and then the G chord looking like this. Now let's move to the F chord. The F chord is going to be your first finger on the second string first fret. This one's going to require you to arch your finger over the first string, and then the middle finger will come to the second fret of the fourth string. Looks like that. All right, so if you get the F chord, it should sound like this. And a good practice would be to like listen to individual strings. So I'm going to hit this fourth string. I've got that one pressed right, and then I move to the third string. And that one sounds good. You have to leave a little gap in between these fingers so that that string will ring. If you end up with something like this, that means a finger's probably leaning on the string, and you need to roll your finger forward just a little bit. Then you get the F chord, and then you're welcome to strum all four strings. So there you have it. You got your C chord, your G chord, and your F chord. All right, now what I want you to do after you memorize the chords is we're gonna do chord muscle memory. 
or chord switching. We're going to learn how to switch chords. So really you need to develop muscle memory here. The only way you're going to do this is by lots of repetition. So if you have your third finger on the third fret, I want you to move to the G chord. And I want you to do this 10 times, okay? So C chord, and now your G chord. And it'll take you a second to get to it. And then back to C chord, and then back to G chord, C chord, and G chord. We're just gonna pick the, the, the C chord and G for now. C to G, C to G, C to G. And if you find yourself still struggling, just keep switching until you're comfortable with getting to the correct frets. Now, when you're done practicing your C to G, let's practice C to F. So you put your finger on C, now you go to F, and you do that 10 to 20 times. And that's gonna help you get your fingers in place quickly. And then you're gonna to wanna to do F to G. So F to G, make sure you're doing F to G. You put your fingers on F, now move your fingers to G. And this is all an exercise to help you develop muscle memory. F to G. All right, so do those things and then we'll be ready to strum a song.